Welcome everyone to this, um, before the, you gotta use the mic. You gotta use the mic, okay. Oh, that's what you said. Now, can you hear me? Welcome, everyone. Here it is 6.15 on um, June 10th, and we're meeting here in the Rochester High School auditorium for an informational public meeting about the future of the building that we're sitting in here, the, um, the high school building. And we have invited Ethan Bowen to come and act as moderator to just um, get him to exercise his new knee, and, um, yeah. but also just to um, um, present a little bit of air of, of inclusivity and um, just um, want to, um, we're here to, to gather questions and, and disseminate the information and, and answers to questions that were raised at the last informational meeting. And I guess I'm going to just let Ethan take it away here. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. Good. How's that? How's that? Good. Is that blowing your air? Hand, uh, hand away. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, really, there's nothing formal about this, um, but uh, respectful. Um, for let me let me uh, recognize you. Um, the general rules are, you know, speak once. Um, if you have a follow-up. Um, a question after, but otherwise let other people speak so that we get everybody included. And uh, I used to do that. I made sure that if you were asking a question that you actually got an answer to that question. It's sort of something I might listen for too. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, just keep it civil and respectful. And I understand we've got, yeah, someone with a um, hand raised Yep, right I would away. just like to add to that um, and ask the select board, do you want to take Zoom questions at the end like we did at the last meeting, have everybody hold on Zoom? How do you want to do this? Sure, it, it worked last time. I, okay. Sure. Yeah. So just so everybody who's on Zoom right now, I'm going to keep everybody muted, please and thank you. Um, when you're unmuted, there, it creates feedback in the room, so if you could stop mute war with me, Robert, that would be sweet. Um, and then we'll address questions on Zoom at the end. Um, and we do have one person that's on Zoom and I'm unable to tell who it is with a phone number. Do you, do you need that name? Yep. If someone could let us know at 746-8638, um, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. If you could let us know your name, please, that would be great. Thank you very much, Keith. Okay, and so for now, we're all back to everybody on Zoom um, being muted, and you guys can take it away. Great. Are there any questions from the board or comments at this time? That was quick. No. <laughs> um, do you want to present? Oh, we got some more people coming in. Oh, yes, okay, here, sir. Is there a mic for people? Uh, I'll talk loud. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. John Bindrum, and I read uh, Frank Jeffrey's uh, <laughs> letter to the editor last week in the paper, and you know, it spoke of a lot of reality that we have to consider. This whole thing, if we try to keep this building, can turn into a huge costly thing for all of us that pay taxes, that are already paying big taxes. So please let us keep that in mind. Very good. Other questions or comments? Yes, Burma. Uh, I have a question about uh, assessment of the cost and whether or not architects have been consulted and gotten opinions from various architects who might have a better sense of how the building will hold up over time throughout the climate change and refurbishing air conditioning systems cooling systems, heating systems, et cetera. Could you all hear that question? Mm -hmm. We have a uh, architect that has been uh, with the committee uh, since the committee was formed. 
um, that picked up where the Black River study dropped, uh, left off and continued on from there. His name is Greg Gossens. And um, so he is not only currently still with the project, but is committed to continue with the project. So we don't have to start over with a new architect getting familiar with the building. Um, going forward, yes, the, you will probably hear tonight some of some of the uh, the features of going forward that we would be considering for uh, climate change. Good. Thank you. Okay. Further question this time. Yes, Deb. So, is the plan was it ever figured out if the plan and the grant is the only plan that can be done for this building, or if there are other options, or if there's a possibility to amend things? You know, say after the first phase. Uh, and the structural stuff is done, and then amend how that money is spent, or is it locked in as to what's going to happen if uh, the vote is to, to purchase the building? When the grant was applied for, there was a plan submitted. That plan came from a townwide meeting that took place probably five or six years ago. Um, the the grant that was was given, let's say, we'll call it the Bernie grant, um, was was handed over based on what we provided as our plan for the community center. I would say that the the grant would only support something that is a community center. So perhaps if um, one of the aspects of the plan were to um, change to a different category or, or you know anything like that, let's say adult daycare changed into everybody daycare, um, you could vary somewhat, but it would still need to be under the umbrella of community a community building, a community or a, hub, or a nonprofit, non or nonprofit management. If if it was uh, moved over to a for-profit situation in the building, that money would have to be paid back. So if someone comes and and we get the um, well, first off, we have to dis distinguish between the the first point here is the town vote on whether or not to buy the building. That vote is not dictating what is done with the building. What would happen with the building then going forward? I mean, there is um, you know there's there's no commitment to any of these plans now. This is just gathering information to try and have a you know an educated perspective on what what could happen you know whether or not to buy but the vote is just whether or not the town agrees it's a it's a good risk to take the building or do we want to just um, take the known fact that it would cost almost two million dollars to tear the building down which would also incur uh, 30 years of debt to the town starting at um, over ninety thousand dollars a year which is you know that's um, that's significant you know, so. Um, am I correct in when you were, when you guys were talking about the grant money and everything that you were just talking about? Is that the grant that we received through Bernie Sanders fairly recently? Is that the way you're referring to? This? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. I wanted yes. to make sure. Further yeah. questions or comments from the floor? Ethan, yes. I have some questions from our last informational meeting that have, sure, we, have, you. Yeah. Hi. we have provided answers to the questions as best we could. Um, some questions come with no definitive answers, but we can let you know what we know as of now. Um, in the minutes of the last meeting, we pulled out questions. The question of updated or final cost of the building upgrade, what would that cost be? Um, as of late notation from Greg Gosson, the architect has updated the renovation fee to uh, bring the building up to where it could be rented, leased, and used at $3.8 million. Um, it was at 3.1 or 2. Yeah. Welcome inflation. Um, and so now we're looking at 3.8. You might want to check with that question again and again as times go by. Robert? May I add to that 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 is, did not include the soft costs? 
Yes, those are the hard costs. Those are, that's the phase one where uh, it's actual building upgrades. Soft costs are the architect, permits, all of those that are not directly hand, hand on the building. So there, there's some of that too. I don't remember what that one was. but We, we have not had an update on the soft costs yet. Um, we have an update demolition figure. Um, I mean, or is that relevant to that soft cost? It is. Just a point of clarification, yeah. just, just so I understand that. 3.8 million, is that just phase one, the envelope? Yes. So it does not include uh, building to suit the tenants? Correct. Okay. That's not retrofitting the building to the tenants. Right. Okay. That is just bringing the building up to 2025 or 26 at that point. Um, you know, that includes a, a new heating system, HVAC, um, insulation. Um, the windows uh, are probably all going to be replaced. Um, I think that we'll talk about that later, but um, Roof. we can do um, some solar on the roof and the roof itself uh, will be upgraded. So that's just hands-on things. We have an updated demolition figure of $1.7 million to remove the entire building and restore the site to grass. Um, with a bond to cover that cost, as Dune said, it would start out at $94,000 per year, and this is a 30-year bond, so it would slightly reduce as the years go by, like your mortgage did. Um, so that would be something to consider for those um, that wanted to know what it would cost to demo. We got that updated figure as well. Questions about what the school board would predict about the future of the building. I think that's something that we might be addressing tonight. If you still had those questions, bring them forward. We do have people from the school board um, here, so we would be prepared to have that discussion tonight. That was basically uh, the basis of what we wanted this information meeting to be about. Um, just so that we're just not repetitive all the time. So if you have any questions that are pointed towards the school board, we got them here. Uh, uh, can we just wait? Nancy Woolley had a question. Uh, Pat, does that million seven figure include the removal of the demo, whatever it's called, demolished materials and and see. Well, she does said, it include? She said it took grass. Back yes, grass. return it to grass. And, and, Robert, you know, has there's a, so that's a million seven. Yes. Robert has a clarification. Uh, there's an additional 350k uh, allowance for possible toxic materials right. removal if found. Right. If, uh, so that's uh, in addition. So right. that's uh, that's two million dollars. Yeah, and we have been tested for a lot of those, so they've been identified. So that number is is variable, more than likely down. But we haven't dug into the entire building <laughs> like you would when you demolish it. So that it that is another factor. Over here, sir. Yes. Um, if if the town approves keeping the school. That's just, that's the basement of this. At what point, if nobody approves all the monetary things, or how do we get out of this if, if we can't afford to go forward? Say so everybody's like, yeah, let's do it, but then we have these astronomical costs, then where do we go? Are we able to just say, oh, forget it at that point? Or? Well, one of the points I'm going to be discussing is um, if we if we accept the grant money, we're obligated to hold the building for five years. If after the five years um, we choose that the building is is not serving the town the way we wanted to, or not earning its keep, or uh, any of the above, there would definitely be a townwide decision made. Um, with the vote that we're going with now. Um, we're hoping to just have a yes or no. Of course, a yes vote would, would be in support of uh, saving the building and doing the, reconstru the reconstruction and, and getting the building up to code. Um, and, and a no would be that we just don't want anything to do with it and let the school deal with it. So that's what we're looking at right now. Um, can I look five years down the road? 
if you want to help me with that, I would love to. Um, we have optimists and we have pessimists. And so perhaps if you wanted to choose from both sides and, and split it down the middle um, and say, is that a risk we're willing to take? I have a question with the Bernie money. Um, do we have to do any matching of that money? Yes. Does, and how much is that? We have to match it with something in the tune of $700,000. Um, we are applying for another grant with the state of Vermont for $500,000 because we got a private donation of $200,000. The grant people that are, uh, this round of grant w was happening in June. Um, they had a lot of competition for this particular round of grants. They came back to us and said, perhaps it would be better for you to come back to the November round of grants, and they invited us to ask for a million dollars. So that's where that stands right now. That million dollars would not only supply uh, the matching for the three million from the Bernie money, but it would also have a little bit more because of inflation. We don't know if we are going to get that million dollars. At this point in time, no, we do not know that. Is that figure based on the 3.1 million or the 3.8 million figure? Uh, the grant is 3.1. That's that's what we were granted. Yes, but is this what your what the matching is? Is that the five hundred thousand you're talking about? Is that on the three point one figure, or is that on the three point eight figure? The, gr the grant okay, people so don't have an updated figure. We're, it's so be on us. so that would be an updated number that would yeah. have to come out later, right? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes, in the back there. If you could see up a little bit, you could back. Yeah, Matthew Baker Pool up on Bethel Mom Road. Um, is that one million dollar additional grant that you're referring to? Um, does that cover energy retrofits, so the HVAC? Because I know there is money available for that now as well. And if that's not included in the grant potential total, it's a community block grant, so it would just go into the pool of money of, in, on, on top of the three point one million that we would be getting. There may be another number. There, there. The, the committee has several other irons in the fire, and um, so there would be other money at, that that would be applied for, for sure. Yes, Burma. Burma again. Yeah. Is there currently a project manager that is being paid to handle this project? They're interviewing and they're speaking to people. Um, yes, they would love to be hiring a project manager, but until we have the vote, it's hard to hire someone for a job that you don't know if you're going to have it or not. So uh, once we have the vote, that project man or manager that they have been soliciting would be ready to go. Do you know what that salary, what kind of salary is being offered? I do not know that at this time. Yes, Mason. Uh, is there an opportunity to have this vote November 5th? We plan on having it prior to that. Before that? September. In September. <laughs> but it's changed a lot over the years. <laughs> but that's, that's where we're talking. Would it make better sense to wait till November 5th? Um, we had that discussion, and um, what was the outcome of that? We, we, we it, wheeled it back, we wheeled it back as better in September. Decide. Sorry. Can the voters decide the date? Can the voters decide the date? There's a lot of coordination there, so yeah. I, I don't think so. November 5th would be an opportunity to have a large uh, population of the voters vote. Could be considered again. Further questions to come the Is there a list of interested parties that are interested in utilizing the space? Yes. And uh, I think that is a, a important question to answer fully um, prior to deciding about the building. Because if we can fill this building with uh, a vibrant um, businesses and interested parties that can maintain the building, it becomes easier to swallow 
um, especially with this grant money. It's another catch-22, Dean. Um, with there are there are a few tenants that have come forward and spoke of their interest. Um, there are other tenants that are not coming forward to speak because number one, we still don't have the building. So they are waiting for this vote to make a solid commitment. Um, for some of the grants that we're applying for, they're, they're looking for tenant leases to back up the community center. And so again, we can't ask someone to sign a lease on a building we don't own yet. So we, we can't get the cart before the horse as much as we would like to. So is that list uh, public knowledge of the people that are interested? Some of the people have come forward and some have not in, in prior meetings. Is it public knowledge that, we, that you can share? Um, not tonight, but I can check with them and make sure. I mean, they have spoken publicly at prior meetings. About okay, it, so. I, I, I just feel like it's, I know it's the cart before the horse and all, but honestly, um, if if we had a, a you know an interest, like perfect example would be one company said, "I'm going to take this and run with it as a business, whatever business it is, um, instead of the myriad ideas that have been thrown out." Um, it's a no-brainer because we have this grant money. That's my my opinion, but no, I. I really feel like it's important to know who could be utilizing the space. Um, I would prefer to not to put any names out until I check with them first. Okay. Right. Barbara Hart first here. Uh, that same question or issue. If indeed your plan is to rent it, which I gather is part of the process, do you have any idea what you'd be renting it for per square foot? So you know what kind of income. <laughs> As, an, as a possibility, maybe coming in to offset the uh, financial payments, among other things. Did you hear that question? No. It was about square footage being charged to tenants the in the building, board, if that was known. The select board is generally making a stand that we're not interested in being landlords. So this would be up to the Valley Hub um, 5013C that has been formed to make those determinations. Um, if we lease the building to them, and that would all be much later. I guess the question is, when you're projecting out how to get your return on your investment, have you, I'm sure some people have already looked at that. I'm just trying to find out what you anticipate would be some income if indeed the best of all worlds was to occur, that you were renting the whole space for X number of years. Do you have any idea at this point what you might be, uh, what the return would be in lease money? Um, the, that's a complicated question depending on how much space you're taking, uh, how much renovation, how much uh, build suit has taken place. Uh, there have been some very, very rough figures of a dollar to a dollar quarter a square foot. But that's, you know, that's a very, very rough figure. Well, I say best case scenario is give you some idea of what you may be getting back for your investment. You have to right. make assumptions whether it's two dollars a square foot, one dollar square foot, so the, the five dollars a square foot. The number of one dollar <laughs> to one one and a quarter has been one to one and a quarter dollars per square foot has been kicked around. Okay, thank you. Per month. Okay. Did you have a uh, um, I was you're good? Okay. Yep. Great. I'll work with that. Uh, yes, Nancy. In the, in the back. Is the nonprofit in place at this point? Yes. I mean, it's formed, and they have bylaws, yep. <laughs> so they're they're prepared. They have members. They have members. And what is the exact name? Oh, Valley, Valley Hub. Hub Inc. Valley Hub Inc. And it's the nonprofit to run this. Potential. In the back, and then to you, Larry. Are any uh, folks from the school district able to comment on the ability of the district to take on the cost of demolition or any other plan with the building? So just asking us, I think if there's a ability to take on the demolition and the cost. Anybody want to stand? Sure. <coughs> Hi. Um, 
So the. Could you identify uh, yourself? Oh. You identify yourself yeah. I'm Amy Wilt. I'm the uh, chair of the Rochester Public School Board. Um, and to your answer, the no, the school does not have money to be able to demo this building or renovate this building. We would have to come back to the taxpayers and ask for a bond to do anything um, to upgrade this building, to demo this building. Um, so we'd be coming back to you on that asking for money. And unfortunately, the grants that um, have they've been awarded to this nonprofit are not available to the school district. This uh, one, three point, 3.1 million dollars is only available if the town takes ownership. The school does not. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. Yes. Uh, Larry. Yes. So that actually ties into my question. Did, if I did, I understand Patty correctly to say that the vote that you are anticipating would be a vote on whether to say yes to the town buying the building, of uh, buying the building for a dollar yeah. and going forward with the renovation or saying no to that or is the vote to say yes to buying the building for a dollar and then deciding what to do? We ourselves haven't determined that one yet. That's, that's a future select board meeting on how we're going to approach the wording of the vote. That was brought up at the last meeting. And we discussed it. And it's a two tiered vote, no matter how you look at it. If you vote to buy the building, then you buy the building. But to do w what with the building is another vote, as far as I, I look, the way I look at it. So I would just, the, the reason I asked that question, and thank you, because I, I wasn't clear about that, Patty's original comment, because uh, I, because we are both the buyers and the sellers as members of the school district, um, I, I, I have become more concerned over time with the inherent unfairness to Stockbridge. Um, and and um, in just, if, if we vote no, just saying, well, now it's the school board's problem. Um, and, 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 you know, putting the Stockbridge taxpayers in the mix of being part of whatever happens. And, um, and, and that was why I want to clarify that question. Further questions or comments? Um, Have any studies been done? I know that the grant that the Bernie grant is very specific. You have to follow what you applied for with the Bernie grant. It only goes as covers what was applied for. But has any study been made to partially tear down some of the building and keep some of the building and what that would look like? Robert, Robert, oh, do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? Go for it. <laughs> well, just from some notes given to me. Um, if, we only, if, if we tore down well, let's say the, the classroom side, side the, the classroom side of the uh, yeah. building over there, yeah. um, it, would, it would take a substantial amount of that $3 million, plus you would be left with a building that you still have to do renovation on if you're going to use it. You're going to have, have to do the heating, you're going to have to do the roof, you're going to have to do window. There, to make it useful, you're still going to have to have money to make it into a useful building. So, um, plus you've lost 
all the space that you could have there for making money. Right. Yeah. So oh, it it doesn't seem to be a viable yeah. option. Yeah. Uh, it seems like uh, we have this situation where if we buy the building and then deal with it, Stockbridge would be very happy with their, their relationship with Rochester. This would be a good thing Maybe. for Stockbridge. But as Stockbridge, Rochester, and the school relationship with the supervisory union, are they more influencing to have the state come in to help the schools deal with the demolish of this building or whatever they're going to do with it than for the town of Rochester? Currently, there is no money in the up in Montpelier for school construction, school uh, demolishing. They would the, where where we would see them putting any money towards would be on um, consolidation and closing of smaller schools, right? You, Okay, so, a little bit better on it. Just, thank you. <laughs> Could you identify yourself? Yeah, Jamie, Jamie Canardi, superintendent of schools. So there's been studies done on school construction aid. The legislature did not put any money forward to support school construction aid. They didn't model it off of Rhode Island when they looked at it. And Rhode Island was about having regional schools, and they would prioritize districts that were willing to build brand new regional schools. And that's been the conversation been happening in the legislature. They've put not one dollar thus far towards school construction aid for anyone in the state. So certainly tearing down a building would be one of the last priorities. Um, and the liability is at this time that So the liability would be on the district, and one of the things the district would need to discuss is if the town voted not to, to purchase it, is are they <clears throat> are they looking to sell it? Because one of the things we need to do by the Articles of Agreement is have the town of Rochester decide if they were going to take it on for a dollar or not. Then we can pursue other, sell, uh, other buyers to possibly purchase the building. We have done some inquiring around that and haven't found anyone necessarily interested in the real estate at this point. Two, one of the things the district talked about way back when I joined you as the superintendent was that you can mothball the building. The district chose not to do that because they knew an upcoming vote about acquiring it could have hap could happen, which is where we're at. So I think it's in the district's interest. I'm looking at board members to shake no to me. If I'm going sideways here, for you to decide as a town where you want to go so that we can pick that conversation back up as a district if needed to discuss next steps. But one of the things that was discussed was the idea of mothballing and possibly putting a fence around it. I would say the appetite for a bond right now to tear it down <laughs> doesn't seem great based on you know the narrative happening right now across the state around school district spending. So I don't know if that helped or not, but. Yeah. Well, with the liability, if there's uh, toxic, toxic materials or things like this, is there? We've already way? done a brownfield. They've gone through level two, and we've got we've got sign-offs on that. So we're not concerned about toxic materials right now, as part or of the down. Or tear it down reasoning. Yeah, well, we and we had to do a brownfield in order to get the grant in order for the town to acquire it. And we've cleared the brownfield level two hurdles. There wouldn't be funds available from the state to, to tear it to down. Tear it down no. because of toxic materials. No, correct. Quick. Did you have another comment? Uh, yeah, and Mason's. A little more volume, if you could. To Mason's comment earlier on potentially having a vote on in November, um, if a prerequisite for potential buyers or interested parties coming forward is the town's possession, maybe having a staggered vote makes more sense to see what who's out there essentially. <laughs> I have to say that just when I was school board chairman, um, I remember we called a bunch of commercial real estate agents 
back in the day, three years ago, not a single one of them wanted to touch this building. They wouldn't even, some, most of them didn't even call us back. Um, Barbara? Yes, could you uh, explain what you mean by mothballing the building and what that would entail? So we, we had discussed draining all the pipes, not heating the building. There was concerns that the slab would actually shift and that it would damage the building moving forward. So that's what we had discussed. So we would no longer heat the building. We would drain pipes and it may shift or it may not, we wouldn't know, but that's what we had discussed. We chose not to do that because the architects were concerned about what that would do to the building moving forward and we didn't want to damage the building if the town wanted to acquire it. So if you mothballed it, it would just kind of stay there forever until nature took its course? Possibly, yeah. At no cost though, other than insurance maybe, right? Mm -hmm. I think of warehousing. I mean, life would be cost would be your If I may, I believe, I thought there was a comment that it still needed to be insured, even if it was yeah. multiple. We would keep it insured yes. through Visbit. Yes. yes, but Visbit was fine if we stopped heating. Okay. So that would be an expense that the school would have to keep up as part of the insurance policy. Which is expensive on a moth, on a, on moth a building ball. not occupied. Yeah. yeah. Very expensive. A, yeah. Questions? Good. Yes, Martha. Um, well, I'm a longtime member of the White River Valley Players, and obviously we've used this auditorium for many, many years. And, and of course, the auditorium gets used for town meetings and other things like this, like this meeting. Um, if the town buys the building for a dollar, and if things work out so that there are other tenants in the building, is this area something that could be stay a, a town? possession, you know, that could be used by like the players in the town for meetings and things like that. It would be long. It would it It's the only thing like it in the whole valley. It would still be controlled by the Valley Hub 5013C, the nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. And they they would allow the town to use it. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um for the school board and Jamie um, can you speak to what you think the future population of our students would be and what would be the possibility of this facility being used for classrooms again? It's a we, we did again. population projections. We're not showing growth. Okay. Based on the population projections we did last year. So we're, sh we're showing that we're not losing but we're projected to continue to be the size we are at our side. Um, you know, in regards to schooling, one of the things I've heard that folks have talked about is child care. I think child care is always really good for communities, so if that is something that the nonprofit wants to pursue, I think that would be great for our kids and could possibly expand some of our pre-K programming that we already offer. I think that, that that does attract young families. One of the things we've done um, over the last four years since I've been here is that we do have public pre-Ks now in all of our school districts for three and four year olds other than one who has a really close partnership in Stratford with a nonprofit pre-K that we actually rent space to within the school district building. Um, so, you know, that is one thing where you could look to expand is in child care and, and that early education offer. Yeah, yes, in the back then. Who first, sorry. Oh, sorry. You in the back first, yes. And I'll get down to Burma. Does the proximity to the elementary school have restrictions other than the obvious, you know, tobacco sales, alcohol sales, marijuana sales? Are, what other categories of activities would be precluded from the building <laughs> for a business purpose? I don't know that I could recognize any. Um, it, can, it cannot be a, a facility for any residences. So, you know, if you were thinking about rehab center and any of that, no. It, you, no one, there are no pillows allowed in this building. Yes. Oh, I see. Leslie. Um, I just want to go back to the realtor question, and I do believe that the school district began to discuss putting the building up for sale. 
about three years ago, but it was my understanding that was the beginning of the pandemic and the realtors wanted nothing to do with it. They had more than they could do and the title companies also were, you know, like overwhelmed. So it was, I think that was a timing issue, um, why they didn't want it to discuss. This is a, a vague question, so I don't expect an exact answer, but what can the town afford to do with the building? What, where, where's the budget committee, and how much money does the town have to take this on? Because you say you don't want to be landlords, but if the town buys the building, you are the landlord. <coughs> Uh, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't have any money to do it. With. That's the yeah. big thing. I don't see it anyway. I don't find it anywhere. We're lucky we can afford what we do afford. And I don't see how this is ever going to pay off in the long run. I just can't imagine trying to repurpose a building when you don't have a purpose. Yeah, my. It's but that's just me. I, I, my, no, I you would, know. I, I mean, I, I can't find the money in the budget. You to do are, this. You are involved as a select board member. <clears throat> Correct. And you see, I see your meetings, I watch your meetings, and I see how you struggle with so many different aspects to keeping the buildings in good shape, the park in good shape, the roads in good shape, and more and more people are asking for more and more services from the town and expecting more services. And I'm just wondering, what can the town really afford to own? That's that's the um, of the real <coughs> the um, the bind that we're in here because it's going to be um, possibly down the line it, it could support itself, but in the meantime, there's going to be with an estimated sixty to ninety thousand dollars a year to keep the building um, running while it's being um, developed for for tenancy. But on the other hand, if we decide to tear it down, there's a guaranteed starting at 90 something thousand dollars a year to spend to end up with a, a nice grassy field. So, but and if the town has to borrow any money, there's going to be interest <coughs> that the town is going to be paying yeah. every year, regardless of whether it's for tearing the building down or for building the building up. Well, the nice well, thing about correct. building the building up is that we get to start with $3.1 million. Yeah, yeah, that, that's not a loan that we'd be pay, paying interest on. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but that's just to get the building rentable. Then you have to find the renters. Yep. Sorry, not yet. Hold up, get this over here, please. We'll... Yeah, Larry Creech. Um, just sitting here thinking outside of the box, totally. I don't want anybody to shoot arrows at me. <laughs> um, if you get the 3.1 or whatever and you renovate the place and you can't find any renters, has anybody thought about contacting the federal government or the state government and putting housing yes. in those offices? <laughs> because you would get... That, that was one of the early questions and um, the proximity to the floodplain um, pushed push that right off the off the table yeah and so it, you could not get federal money no, no that put it right down to the house. bottom of the list in terms of any kind of right. funding yeah no because that's needed and that was yeah we thought about that in the back again so on the floor, sorry what's your name again Matthew Baker. Matthew. 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 Sorry, on the floodplain issue, is that an entire footprint problem, or is it just a section of the footprint? And if just a section, could the building be bifurcated to allow pillows in the non-flood zone and find some other use in the flood zone? <laughs> they actually did um, do some um, property um, line management to get the um, a corner of the property out of the act active flood zone to allow this to happen, but it's still the proximity was too close e either way. Yeah. Leslie. And then main, let go. It's going on and on. Leslie and then Mason. And, um, and Rob, 
Robert can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the architect involved in the plan and the, uh, the other fellow um, was probably more of an engineering firm, that the structure did not lend itself to housing, was not suitable as a conversion project. Mason. Uh, in reference to the floodplain, uh, we can all remember when Irene and uh, when the size of culverts were increased in the state. Uh, so what's going to happen in 20 years? Is this floodplain potentially a more of a floodplain than it is today? This is the investment we got to think about. And we did pass a climate emergency declaration, and that should be a part of this discussion, is what is our thoughts about where we're heading with that element you know, along with everything else we're doing. Basically also, how are we looking at the carbon footprint of every aspect of this? The flood maps have all been just updated since I read. Um, Rochester was one of the first towns that uh, FEMA went through and updated the flood maps. So um, I don't think that's going to change for a while. Um, this building <clears throat> is partially in flood zone. Um, with that being climate, um, the fact that we are not putting, we're not able to put people sleeping in a flood zone does respect the climate, I would say. So climate change. So I think that both of those are being addressed. If not, clarify it for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg Gossens, the architect uh, working in, with the committee at the moment, um, has discussed uh, uh, ways to get solar on the roof and use a ground source heat pump to heat and cool the building. Uh, those would be, those are exactly what needs to happen across our society. We need to electrify and utilize renewable energy uh, for the remaining load. Um, so I think that's a very you know, very forward and necessary thing for our community to do is to take care of our own yard. Robert. Uh, just as far as the floodway and flood, there's floodway of which we had to modify the, the uh, uh, outline of the property to get rid of the part of the building that was in the floodway. But the majority of the, the building is in the flood plain. We have, uh, in the, the school has taken care of uh, some mitigation. You look over on this door here, there's a bulkhead there. To If, if we get a flood event, it's gonna pre prevent or, re or reduce. mitigate, reduce, mitigate the flood waters coming into this part of the building. There are other parts of the building that have such mit mitigation that has already been done. Present questions or comments? I think we might be ready to go. Yeah, I think it'd be fair to the online people have been very patient. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you to unmute Robert. You can go ahead with your question. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Robert Frank, and I think I have a solution. Building, disregarding all the real estate agencies that have uh, not taking it to put forth onto the market, it would be the best thing to do to sell it to, you know, Mr. O'Leary on Shark Tank. Go buy the building and the town doesn't have to have, take on the responsibility of 30 years of, of debt. We cannot afford this. And I want to make it clear, my I live in Bethel, Vermont. I don't live in Rochester. But if any dollar, any any percentage of educational dollars are put forth to this <coughs> endeavor, is 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 it, it cannot we cannot withstand it. And I would recommend that everyone take very close notice to their last tax bill with regards to the percentage of property taxes, it's 85% of your property taxes are put forth 
to the supervisor union. And it's going over 100% in August. So this whole discussion is not about, it's not about, it's about a solution. It's not about all this conjecturing and what if we do this and what if we do that. Put the building up for sale and I, <coughs> I swear to the Lord, I will find a buyer to buy the building to put a bunch of uh, servers in there to, to feed communications and uh, goodness into Vermont we are deserving of. So I think this whole discussion is basically a waste of time. If the building has to be sold to a, a, a wealthy person or a business owner, an entrepreneur, and just take it out of your take it out of your collection and just get rid of it. It, it doesn't have to be demolished. It doesn't have to be uh, put forth to the taxpayers for the next 30 years. It just has to be marketed. And you know, <coughs> I, in my heart, I have survived here for 20 years, and I. I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm almost disgraced by what, I, what, I, what I'm watching. And, you know, the gentleman on the end of the aisle, he had, I don't, get, I don't know what, what his name is. Maybe Ethan Bowen can tell me right now what his name is. He talked about somebody to purchase the building. Ethan, can you respond to that? Robert, I don't know who you're talking about. I think you've made your basic point, and I'd like to go on to uh, other comments. Thank you. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm sorry, there's a second point. Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, Robert. No, I'm, I'm asking the gentleman. You give me the go ahead. Yeah, but it's not that it's, this is not for you to have discussions. You're about to, it's about you bringing your comment or question to the, to the questions, and then we move on. And so it's not about you having a discussion with somebody in the audience here. Okay, so I think you've made your point about selling the property and that that's your best idea. And I think we need no, to move on. Wait, 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 wait a second. What is my point, Ethan? Your point is that we should commercial, sell it commercially and not take it on in the town. That's what you said. Yeah, I think that's the point. Thank you. I can comment to that, that sure. if, if we decide to take the building and sell it right away, it's going to be a building that's going to need almost $4 million worth of repairs. That's going to be difficult to find someone to buy into that. Um, so Robert would be up to find that person if that time came. Once we do the renovation to the building, and we have a building that's all up to code and efficient and running, there's a possibility that may be attractive enough to, for someone to step in and purchase it. Um, it's, it's not something that's off the table. Um, there's two aspects, the building as it is right now and the building after it's been completely renovated. So it's a two-tiered thing. And believe me, we'll contact Robert first. So Robert, can you please stop on muting? Because it's creating havoc at the table. That would be great. Okay, and I don't have any other raised hands on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, to Patty's point, I think I think it's important to um, clarify or to know if if we were to do phase one renovations, um, I'm sure, it, and we use the grant money. I'm sure there's some restrictions about five years. Around. Okay. okay. Five years, then you can sell. And is that five years from the start of construction? Or? Question. I think it's five so years from the, the, from the receiving the grant. grant. For, so from receiving the grant, right. it'd be five years, which renovation mm -hmm. takes some time. One of the issues with the grants that is a concern for its the grants would be responsible for the town, so the girls over here would have to be implementing that grant and doing all the paperwork without, and that's a, an issue that I think that needs to be addressed, that would have to be uh, addressed before anything like that could happen. Ethan, I believe, that, I believe that as part of the grant, there's money for Two Rivers to yeah. oversee, the, oversee the grant. Oversee the grant and the paperwork. Yes. And would that be part of the project manager's job as well? Yes. Mark, is there a question? So, Mark, 
Am I correct that once you receive the grant, this this, um, and we haven't received it yet, right? right? Um, you you have five years to get everything done. Uh, that's no, correct. Five years before you five sell. Five years before we could sell it. Right. Five years. Well, that's what I mean. You have five years to get everything done before you could sell it, or you could. Yeah. Or transfer ownership to or the transfer nonprofit. Ownership to right. what? To who? To the nonprofit, the Valley Hub. As an option. Yes, Robert. I'd, I'd like to ask a question for the select board. There, we we talked earlier about services, whether you can afford it or not. Young people in this community are looking for daycare services and other services in this community, and I want to know what the select board is envisioning for the future to, to provide those services. We have a lot of, uh, of volunteers who responded to um, surveys and community meetings uh, to determine what the what what people wanted, and have that's what started this whole project. And the the question is, if we don't do it here, how is it going to get done? We have people who have successfully got so far 3.1 million dollars in grants. To, does the select board envision in any other fashion such a project? of such scope, right? We're, we're talking about renovating the, the building to provide, uh, a, to, to provide certain service, community services. Um, I, I would, you know, that, and that have been asked for. But, you know, so a lot of volunteers have done, done their effort to provide a solution and come up with with a viable is are there guarantees? No, no one endeavor that you do will have guarantees. There's going to be risk in any endeavor that you do, and you know we know that we have um, uh, uh, one uh, almost two million dollars to blow this building away as a liability that's not even a that's a known risk um, it seems to me that if you have money of you have people providing motivation and incentive um, uh, and we have people willing to do grants and give us money to do renovations um, yeah that's it, what the risks that you have are, oh gee, we might have to spend sixty to ninety thousand dollars a year for five years versus thirty years at ninety thousand dollars to get rid of the place. You know, some some things seem, you know, why would you do? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you take that risk, which is not so big a risk anymore? That's my question. That, my question, question to the board is. I think your question was about do they have alternative plans for all these things that are needed for the community if this project does not go through? So the, the, the short answer is no, that we don't have any alternative plans to what would provide those, those services to the town. Um, and speaking, I mean, so as a select board, you know, we've been pretty. Um, pretty uniform in, in our thoughts on how to go forward on things. This, this is a, isn't a situation where we have some good, good um, um, variety of opinions on it. You know, I, you know, I like to fix up old buildings, usually older buildings than this, but you know, um, I, I see there's three options. There's, there's, we, um, spend the money to take the risk of renovating the building and and um, seeing what kind of life it can and foster we can spend the money to tear it down and have a, a field or a parking lot or we could spend no money and have a um, a fenced um, relic that will really drag the town down i don't really like the third option of just mothballing it and putting a fencing around it it, it doesn't um I don't think that would bode well for, for the town moving forward. 
but as a select board as a whole, that's why we made the decision early on to make this a town vote. We're not going to say that the three of us are going to make such a big decision for the whole town. You know, this, uh, we were gathering as much information and having these meetings and, and the fact that people have been able to come up with the uh, amount of um, funding that they have is, is pretty impressive, I think. It's a big challenge, but um, there are, you know, I've heard several people that show interest in, in renting it. I don't think that we would just be, um, the town would be paying for a, a pretty empty building. I think stuff would happen in here. No. Can I just clarify? Yes, yeah. Well, that's it. Um, how, how long are we going for? I mean, we're getting repeat people um, asking questions. Do you want to keep going until we Well, I think that we call this meeting to really, so people can understand okay. what's no, going I just, on. So I, I don't think we need to go on super long but it will no as this town has evolved in the 1970s they built this campus that was a risk they built this knowing that the valley was growing they were serving other communities in this valley but this town took it on themselves to provide the service to the whole valley in the 1980s sorry sorry in the 1980s we started developing the park house which has been uh, an asset to the community that took a lot of endurance, and, and it was an old building. We renovated it, and now we do have that as an asset in our community in the 1990s. We redid the Pierce Hall. What the heck were we thinking? That was monsters, monsters after monsters after monsters of uh, hurdles that we needed to climb to get that building up to code and usable. And it's now one of the gems of our community right off the park, perfect place. In the year 2000s, we donated money to start this weird thing called EC FiberNet. And we spent money to bring this, this broadband internet into our community. It was a crazy idea, but we went with it. And now we have people that live here and can work from home because of the strong internet that we have. That was a major asset to our community. So I just think it is the flavor of Rochester to continue on. And, and this, is, this is just another step that I see in how we continue to develop and grow our community and make our community as sustainable as possible. Otherwise, we're going downhill, and if we don't keep it alive, we've got, we've got to fight for it, we've got to develop. I wholeheartedly agree, Patty. Um, and I also agree with Robert's um, um, question towards the, the select people. And honestly, if we don't look forward, we have a chance to um, not be as vibrant as we are as a community. I want to um, thank the, um, the town of Rochester uh, for the, uh, the work we've been doing towards skate space. And this year we are going to be renovating a space that's adjacent to this property um, and making it um, viable for a recreation um, center. And honestly, I think uh, if the town were to take over the um, school, it has every ability to be a center of recreation that has already started to, to burgeon all around it. The hiking trails that we have here right behind the school, the tennis courts, the skate space, um, the biking that goes on there, the skateboarding, the ice skating, all that is very, it's a vibrant um, sign for our community. And if the building if we don't take this opportunity, it'll be um, it'll, it'll be a black eye in our uh, for our town, as far as I'm concerned. Martha, I was just going to say that when Robert was talking about one of the things I was excited to hear about that was that presented as an idea that could possibly happen is child care center and things like that. 
When I first moved to Rochester 39 years ago with three young kids, one of which was a, a little girl who just turned a year old, I was a newly divorced single mom, and childcare was something I really, really, really needed. And at the time, I was lucky enough that there was a building next to the school called Dandelion Daycare, which is no longer, in, you know, hasn't been around for a long time. But I've been thinking about it since the pandemic. A number of families moved into town like a lot of other towns in the area, um, people came from other places uh, because they thought they're safer or whatever. And But they have young children and they need child care. And we really only have, the only child care we have in town is in, is in private people's, or people's private homes, if that makes sense. And a lot of people are looking for that kind of thing. And also, it would fit right in with the, what you're talking about with recreation and stuff like that too. There's after school programs. I don't know. There's just it's just one of the ways that this building could be put to use. Amy. Amy. Well, I just wanted to piggyback on that that the school would be very excited to have a child care facility close by that could filter those kids into our elementary school, potentially even growing our elementary school population. Um, so that is something that we're really excited to partner with a, a, a community a, um, child care facility. Oh, oh I'll come here. Why don't you start? Hi, I'm Bill Edgerton, Stockbridge. I'm on the Rochester Stockbridge School Board. And I just wanted to share a perspective for all of us, but I'm really speaking for the to the select board. I don't mean to put my back to you, so I'm not sure how I communicate this, but most of the meetings and questions and concerns I hear about the risk of trying to benefit the community. Can we get all the necessary grant money? Will the rental money come through? Will, uh, will we be able, what are the risks there? Will we get tenants? And I suggest there's another way of looking at this one, and I think this one is more real, and that is Rochester is facing a risk, an unfunded liability of that building. And you can say we can mothball it, that's going to cost us money. You can say we'll just leave it there forever. I disagree. It's an unfunded liability, and if you look at the definition of it, that's what you've got. You've got an asset that is not giving you one dime, but it could result in, we've already gone from a demolition estimate of 1.2 million to 2 million. We mothballed for, for 10 years and then we're told we have to tear it down or we can't get insurance for it. It's gonna be even more of that. The town of Rochester will be paying for getting rid of a, of a, a risk, but getting no return. And we've just heard about all the benefits, potential benefits. So look at this risk. $2 million, if you talk about paying it now, over 30 years or 10 years, it would be $3 million, versus, OK, we can't, the grant money, we're going to be short $200,000. So okay, $200,000 versus $2 million. Oh, we can't get enough tenants so that temporarily we're going to have to pay an extra $100,000 a year. $100,000 a year versus $2 million plus interest. So you can go on and on and on and look at that. And I'd really like to see an analysis saying, here's the risk. And what can we do positively to reduce that risk? And as a number of speakers said, not only are we reducing that risk possibly to zero, because we're going to get all this grant money, but we're getting the benefits. And I'd like people to think about whether it's child care or recreation, um, it's the use of this building and this gorgeous space, what it means for bringing young families to Rochester and keeping families here, and put a dollar total on that thing. And I think the so-called risk, and it is a risk, of, and it is a real risk. At some point, Rochester is going to have to tear this place down, and Rochester is going to have to pay for it. That's versus we've got a project here that says all these benefits, and most if not all that money is going to be paid for by grants and then by renters. And I'd like to see that equation looked at so we can look at the real risk profile. And we're all concerned about risk. I'm old, that's, um, and to see how those things play out. And I think it will be much clearer that doing something positively now is a lower risk 
then that unfunded liability of $2 million plus, 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 with a zero return for the taxpayers. And that's what I just urge the town and select board to take a look at and, and see how the numbers fall out. Thank you. Yes. And then never I was just going to say, I think, you know, we, we've established or it's been established that this can't be used for um, to be built out for residences. That's off the table. But um, what about the town office, the current town offices? You know, are, are those, could those be built out for affordable housing? And the town offices could move down to this building. I mean, that, that's enough, to me, that's another potential opportunity. I agree. We, we could free up that space. Because we, we, we definitely need affordable housing to bring young folks in and take you know, jobs that are available. Well, that, that just um, speaks to the, the, uh, the point that we're, we don't even know all of the uses that this building could be put for in the future. You know, and then that's you know we're it just starts with a decision whether or not to take the risk to to start the process by buying the building for a dollar. Lot sick for getting an order of oh, debt. So I think you know part of you know the whole economic development of this valley um, housing is a huge issue, and since 2019, it was 19 to 20 when the first meetings happened about. You know, what do we do with the, the building and, and what ideas had come up? And since that time, I would be interested to know how the tax rolls have changed because a lot of property has sold in the past three years. A lot of affordable housing <coughs> has been bought by people that maybe are here part time or use it for short term rentals. So. You know, what does the tax base look like for funding things and for, for full-time residents versus part-time residents? Because I think things might have changed in the past uh, four or five years. Are you asking about the usage of the building or? No, no, about, you know, how the, the community itself can support. So, you know, we have, a lot of the lands in National Forest land that we don't really get much from. So the tax base is supporting this town because the infrastructure of the town, the select board has to work on so many different levels to keep this town running. You know, adding this property and you know the affordability, just to get to the affordability of things between the school taxes that have gone up significantly, the town taxes, that I'm sure that you didn't get all that you needed or wanted into the budget this past year. So it's more about the affordability of, you know, what are our tax rolls look like, if that could be looked at at some point. The tax base between residential and non-residential, if, if, if that's where you think you want to go with that, is uh, not a big difference. Um, I don't know if we have any listers here, but this, it's the, the difference between the two tax bases is not a lot of money. There hasn't been a lot of shift as we're getting more money from people that are second homeowners rather than residential. Um, the tax base pretty much tax is... The people that are residents are the ones that pay for the school, correct? They have the school tax. Non-residents don't pay a school tax. Yes, 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 absolutely. The non-residents... They don't get, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they, they don't get yeah. any prebates, uh, income sensitivity, so. It's a little bit higher, but not much. You know, aside from the affordability of the town, there's also the shortage of affordable housing yes, there is. to move into the town as well. That's true. Um, earlier tonight, I heard uh, Jamie say that the school population was not increasing, and he didn't foresee it as something that would be increasing. Uh, so my question is, 
if the school population is not going to be increasing, what kind of thriving daycare would you have? And you know, what it, what do parents pay for daycare? I don't even know what it costs for for daycare. Is that something that would be in the building that could sustain the building and sustain the cost for having Whoa. the building? And the other the other Sorry. question Whoa. I'm trying to as oh. as I understand that that would be one piece of the puzzle. This would this whole building would not be dedicated Whoa. to a daycare. The other question yeah. I have has to do with Airbnbs in our town. There's an Airbnb next to me. The people staying there Whoa. own two Airbnbs in this Whoa. town, and they are staying in an Airbnb, and they don't even live in Vermont. <laughs> I mean, so much of our town is being bought up by people who run Airbnb businesses, and they don't even live here full time and if there's no affordable housing how can you have thriving community and airbnb people <coughs> don't get involved in community projects they just don't they come they do their thing they leave their houses empty half the year sometimes nobody's even in the houses i mean i just think that that's something to consider with Airbnbs, um, it's it's not something the select board is going to be addressing. This is for no, the legislature. No, no, no. But um, all of the fees that they pay, um, there is a 9% meals and rooms tax that is goes to the state of Vermont. And the state of Vermont does get a, a significant revenue from Airbnbs. Um, also, it, but do we get it? Well, <laughs> we're supposed to somehow. <laughs> um, the uh, Also, the... The people that have bought houses that have been, remained stagnant for a long time, in order for them to do those Airbnbs, have done significant upgrades, and um, they all need to be to code, fire code, because they're now commercial entities. So it has upgraded our base, and we're about ready to do a reassessment of the town of Rochester. So that will probably, we will see our tax base increase when they see how many Airbnbs there are, and, and those figures will get upgraded, so too. So who in the town goes to these places and does the fire inspection? Fire marshal. Fire marshal, the state fire marshal. Okay, we've got some more hands up. Oh, yes, over here. I've been listening tonight to everyone's got good suggestions. Um, they're limited, though. And my question to everyone is, if people have lots of good ideas, they should write them down. And then the select board should put together a folder or something with all these ideas so that I don't have to sit here and go, well, this is a pretty big piece of the school, the high school here, and we're going to have daycare here, and that's going to solve all our problems. It's really not. So we need a lot of ideas so you can hook me into this positive feeling toward this you know future development of this building because with we i don't have enough ammunition here from you guys to make me want to think that this is a viable project at this point so to vote on it there's not enough information we need to be like putting out something that's going to really fire up people and say, yeah, that's, look at all these ideas. And, you know, and here they are, they're written down. We can give a handout to people and put it on the, you know, in the stores and everybody can pick it up and say, this is what we want to do. And right now there's, and I'm like kind of floating around going, well, daycare's not going to cover it. Arts isn't going to cover it. We need ideas so that we can at least think let's this is all good maybe a percentage of this may fly and maybe we can go forward this is the second of probably four informational meetings um, the first one some of that was discussed this one was pointed more towards um, the school's involvement whether whether we should or shouldn't what would happen on the other side um, plus additional 
information. So stay tuned. There will be other informational meetings that different aspects will come at you, and, and we'll be discussing all of that. I mean, Catherine and Vic of the committee are not here tonight. Um, when they are here, you will be hearing about what the plans are for the building and all, all the different plans. Stay tuned. Let's go to Chad and her comment. I just wanted to point out that this discussion did start years ago, and all of that information has been posted on the town website as well as the Facebook page that's available. And there, there's a lot of documentation and information that's out there. Um, and it, it seems to be kind of a frequent circle that we come back to. Um, I hear a lot of the same questions, people asking questions that have already been answered. Um, and they're there for the reading. Just to, to go on the, on the town website, the Facebook page, um, all of it's right there. Leslie? Um, I, I just want to say that as part of the architect and the engineer working here and doing assessments, it, it was determined that nonprofits cannot support it. We know that. We have to have a major tenant. There has to be a major tenant. So there's daycare wants to get in. They've been, they, they've been trying. They, they would have loved the school to have been bought for a dollar three years ago when we first started. They're ready to go in. They want, they identified the location. Um, there has been discussions with the hospital about bringing in senior daycare. They're not ready to commit because we, we don't have a building. Um, but what we know is we need a major tenant. And so until you own the building, you can't go out on the market and say, look, I have you know, 2,000 square feet, I have 10,000 square feet. So we, we can't go forward to some of the steps until we answer the basic question. Thank you, Matthew, for that um, Can someone remind me of the financial risks of purchasing and then doing phase one, which is, let's say, $4 million, maybe higher? There's $3 million of grants already available. There's the potential for another $1 million in grants. That gets us to four. There's uh, state energy retrofit money available. It's probably several tens of thousands. And then once it's phase one is done, if you don't want it anymore, you, you could sell it. I don't, what are the other risks? So there's an insurance component there. What other costs go into phase one that I didn't just list? The um, aside from the construction, the ongoing, the estimated cost just to run the building um, during the construction and and in the period as we build up tenancy, they're es estimated to sixty to ninety thousand dollars a year. So that's that's the main concern. So the the grant money would take care of that initial phase of construction. The the concern is. What's it going to cost to maintain the building? The, the grants are not there to pay the electric bills and the, and the heating bills. Right, 60. If we do the furnace first, yeah. that'll go down. Yeah. There's another issue later. Yes, yeah. the, oh, Alexa, sorry, you've had your hand up for a bit. Just uh, it's just that we have an actual regular select board meeting to go on as well this evening, and it's yep. getting later, and I yeah, just wondered if we have it's, a, um, I'm just asking, what? I'll, I'll, yeah. How long? Time I, I think we've, um, unless, uh, well, Jeff, you've got you a comment. You want to finish it up, Jeff? Uh, I mentioned that the operation and, and maintenance of the building, um, the operation could go down. If we've got solar on the roof and a ground source heat pump, uh, yeah. that's going to be less costly to operate. Yeah. And I would suggest that's one of the first things we do. Yeah. <laughs> I also kind of want to make it public if I could. Something has gone on with Zoom, um, so I'm not sure how we need to proceed with this. I was removing someone from the meeting because of interruptions um, after muting him 104 times. Um, and apparently when I did that, our meeting has lost audio. Um, people at home can see us, but they're unable to hear us. So I don't know if that means anything, but I just felt like I needed to say it. 
Well, could you? I mean, um, we are being recorded on Orca, so I can don't we know if close, that. close this informational meeting now, and then maybe try and restart it for the select board meeting. I don't you think want we should. Another another at some point. Like for the two of or them. another information. Yeah, meeting. yeah. Not, not right now. Probably just kick everyone out, and if they try to rejoin, it should work. Okay. Close the meeting starting. Okay. Are we done? I think. I think so. Okay. With that, we're going to end the informational meeting. Thank you all for turning out. To be continued. And now, those of you who would love to hear the exciting <laughs> select board meeting, I have one announcement. Stay. Though, um, anyone who is not going to stay for the select board meeting, we're looking for a ride home for Ethan, who generously. Oh. <laughs> um, Offered to come down and be the moderator, but with his new knee, I, I he is not my own. But it's yeah. a it's a long walk. Yeah. Okay. He's got a long driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, oh, you Thank you. Thank take you. Take the most attractive. Be careful, oh. Ethan. Yeah. Yeah. Take it slow, but stretch it out. Stretch it out. All right. Well. You still have to pop some more. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Hey, you know, everybody has, a, has their yeah. opinion about yeah. it. Yeah. But you know one thing that you notice when you look out there, mm -hmm. 20 years from now, nobody's here. Yeah, right. They're all dead. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we're, yeah. Phew. But we're making a decision I know. that 20 years from now, yeah. that somebody else is going to have to pay about for that. it. Whoever <laughs> made the decision to, to build this school, um, my mother. Long gone. We're, we're dealing with that decision. Yeah. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the can down the road. So like, well, how interesting do we want to make their life? And, and you know, I, I understand how people feel about it. It's easy to, to go and say yes to all this money, but my God. I'm going to go use the bathroom. Are you okay? I don't see how we can do it. Okay, what do we got now? Hmm? There we go. Oh, yeah, the fire truck pay off. We got that money? <laughs> we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> Kristen, can you hear me? This is Vic. Yeah, can you hear me, Becky? Yeah, I, can, I can hear you fine. You can? I can't believe it. There's on another computer? Okay. <coughs> Paula couldn't hear us, and I lost, I lost Troy. And I think I ate 10 cough drops for dinner. <laughs> you probably be wired right for sound. You know what? After tonight, I'm okay with that. I got four left. Good thing you brought them. Yeah. I'm sucking them right down. All right, so um, Monday night, phase two. So should we just um, jump right into this here? And we'll to hey, you don't have to be at the Dartmouth coach any earlier than departure time, right? It's not like an airport. Um, well, you no, should you be just there won't be there enough. on time, though, because they'll leave when they leave. Right, okay. And, and yeah. not just I that, green but Dave. it's first come, first serve. <laughs> Unless you get a ticket. Unless, unless you get a ticket. She has a ticket. This okay, is Dave's mom. Yeah. Okay. I'm supposed to put her on the Dartmouth coach, and Diane's going to be in Boston taking her off. All right. Um, all you hearty souls that have stuck around for um, phase two, we're going to open up the, um, the regular select board meeting of um, June 10th, which has been... Um, at 7.43 p.m. on uh, June 10th, um, has been posted in three public places on the website and emailed to interested parties, correct? So we can um, move forward first with the uh, minutes from the prior meeting of May 27th, which I read and I um, didn't have any corrections, so I'd move to approve those. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Um, we have, um, uh, we're talking about approving the fire truck payoff um, from June 30th, 2024. That's 
we're ready to do that and move on that? Yeah, that's something that we had discussed um, in budget and finance um, to pay it off early. Um, mm -hmm. And we're just about to do that, but we just need approval. Is that my understanding? Right. I, I have, have to have like, written and signed approval yeah, um, for the auditor. It's part of our strategy of paying something off early to get out from the interest payments. Right. So, so yeah. we don't have that. Yeah. So I'd, I'd move to go ahead and um, pay off that fire truck. A second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. Um, we have a park use application for <coughs> Pierce Hall for Sunday, June 23rd for the ice cream social from 2 to 4. Um, I've never seen massive problems from that in the past, so I'd, I'd move to approve that. I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Yep. And then we also have another park use application um, from Pierce Hall on Thursday, July 4th for the and on um, for the Riverbrook Park for the 5K run walk um, from 7 to 11 a.m. And um, I'd move to approve that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. And then Pierce Hall is also asking for um, park use. Um, Thursday, July 4th for the barbecue and the 50-50 raffle from 9 to 2.30. Um, and I move to approve that. I second that. All in favor? All Aye. Right, right. Yep. And now we move on to considering and possible approval of the tax anticipation note um, with the Mas Mascoma Bank, loan number 640267 for... $884,435. So um, basically, we need to do this to um, pay, off the, pay the bills and or, or to, to pay off the truck. <laughs> pay off the truck. <laughs> pay off the truck. Um, and we've, um, I, I think we've considered this and figure this is the uh, we way we want to go forward. Too, we? hmm? We've done this in the past. Yeah, we have done this in the past. Yes. So, um, I would move to uh, approve that um, application and move forward. I yeah. second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. And then we have the um, local hazard mitigation plan bids. And there were, um, oh, that's in, in here. I'll try not to make a big noise with that. And that is <coughs> basics. <coughs> Go. So, and we had um, a few of those. Three. Three. Oh, sorry. Apologies. All right, we had um, three um, from Jamie Kaplan Consulting, LLC. And we had the numbers on that. No. One of them was 89,000. I forget which one. 89828 um, was Two Rivers. I'm looking for a number of um, his. I think you can find it right here. The Jamie Kaplan Consolidation Construction, I couldn't hear what's in that one. He's looking. Okay, I'm sorry. You didn't say it. Sorry. One's 89. Okay. This is. Um, Paul Luciano is on $8,900. And there's some Captain. There it is. There we go. Oh, there we go, over here. And um, it's a seam solutions for um, $9,600. So uh, we were talking about, um, even though they were. Um, in 98. Two Rivers, we've worked with quite a bit in the past. They did our last mitigation Did the plan. last mitigation plan. Right. And for a, a small amount of money, I don't know, is it worth jumping ship to someone that has to learn nope. the new ropes? No, nope, I, I don't think it is. Cracker Jack's at it. Yeah, so I, I would <coughs> move to uh, approve the, um, the proposal from Two Rivers out of Quichee Regional Planning Commission for $9,828. I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Okay. Check those numbers down. And not at our regular desk here. 
Okay. Um, and then we've got a contract for the Windsor County Sheriff Department, which um, they have been. Um, let's see if we got a number on the bottom of that. Thirty-two. Is that where we are now? Thirty-two thousand. Thirty-two thousand for the next year. Thirty-two thousand five hundred. Thirty-two thousand yep. five hundred. And um, I've been pretty happy with their, their services. And we met with them during the budget and finance meetings okay. and uh, have a good report going forward. Okay. So. so I'd move to approve that contract. A second. On favor? Aye. 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 All righty. <laughs> um, anybody out yep. there from the library? No. No, that's all right. Yeah, I'll do a bunch of signs. Okay. And the highway is... Um, Good shape the roads I've been driving yep. on. Yeah, they, they're uh, painting lines and, and they did a bunch of ditch work up in <clears throat> West Hill. They've been. Hey Terry, back there, you got anything to talk about on the utilities front? No. No. Okay. Thanks for hanging in there, though. Um, how, how about um, I think Jeff was here and he's probably driving home now, so I don't know if he's going to join us. But um, how about grant updates? Don't have kind of quiet right now. Kind of quiet. Yep. All right. That's bringing us to the um, public comment section of the meeting. There's still a hey Mason. Uh, in reference to the possibility of the select board having another in, uh, meeting like we did tonight, where a discussion was held about uh, the purchasing of the building. I would like to have the select board consider having that particular meeting at Pierce Hall. Hmm. Why so? I think it gives a perspective to the community of, of, of what we have in this community. And what we have already accomplished. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. <laughs> I think we should, we, don't, vi we should visit that. We, we can use the Pierce Hall. Yeah. They, they have granted us free rent, so we would have to check with them yeah. on dates. Yeah, but I think an uh, opportunity, you're potentially maybe there's going to be at least one more meeting. At least, yeah. At least. Yeah. I do plan on having one um, deeper in the summer. Um, and ask if we could open up the whole building so that people can see the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the ugly is the heating system. <laughs> that's ugly. <laughs> but um, well, that's, it, it could be a consideration. Yeah. yeah. Spread it around a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> um, do we have anybody on Zoom that has any comments? No. No. Well, um, that was a lot quicker than the informational meeting, but I would move to adjourn. <laughs> I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.